And you're listening to Roundhouse Radio On Demand. After nearly 650 days, the United Arab Emirates Supreme Court has acquitted Salim al Aradi. We've discussed this case before on the show. The Canadian businessman was suddenly and arbitrarily detained while on holiday. His trial was tainted with due process and human rights violations that were denounced by the United Nations, many human rights organizations internationally, and high-level Canadian officials. Charges, the most serious that he abetted terrorism, were dropped. And yesterday he cleared what appeared to be the last legal hurdle with the Supreme Court acquittal. But his ordeal is not over. Immediately after his acquittal, he was taken back to prison. His lawyer and his family were stunned and have called on the UAE to dismiss everything against him. And today, I'm reaching Marwa al Aradi, Salim's eldest daughter, and Paul Champ, a human rights lawyer who's been fighting for his release. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. Good morning, Kirk. Well, Marwa, um, good news and bad news. Um, first of yep. all, um, walk me through just the feeling that you had when your father was finally acquitted, finally cleared by the Supreme Court? Of course, yesterday was an amazing day, us knowing that my father, like, got the innocent verdict. That was, like, that, that I've been fighting for this for a very long time. You've put your and life finally on. My, you put your life on hold yeah, pretty well in order to, to fight for his exact, acquittal. Exactly. And, and when yesterday I heard that my father got an innocent verdict, I felt like, I, I'm in a relief now, and everything that I wanted just came true. Then, um, like then. our emotions were, yeah, emotions yeah. were all over the place. We were happy. We we're crying from joy. My, I was like, I couldn't believe it. Were you starting to I make plans? Just, you were starting to make plans to make sure course, you could see him. Like yeah. I can't. Like mm. of course, I like I, I was like finally I'm going to see my father soon. But as soon as I knew that my father was ta taken back to prison that was the upsetting part of our special day like yeah. we really don't know when they're planning to get get him out of prison my father needs instead of him being in prison now he should be in a hospital because of his like critical um, medical conditions and uh, we're very concerned about that like my father's acquittal is ink on paper until he's released immediately because like they just said my father's innocent and then they took him back to like to the prison like prisons are not meant for an innocent innocent people they're meant for people who committed crimes or i don't know were, but not for innocent people were you at all expecting that this could happen not not uh, not at all like we thought that my father would leave the courtroom with the canadian officials as a free man but unfortunately that did not happen and he went back to the prison paul champ help us understand why this might have happened the way it did yesterday well kirk it's it's really difficult to understand like mara was saying uh, a, a prison is not a place for people found to be innocent but, uh, you know, this case has been characterized by arbitrariness uh, right from the very beginning. When uh, Salim was first uh, apprehended in August of 2014, uh, it was more than three months before the United Arab Emirates authorities would even acknowledge that he was in custody. Uh, he was held in a secret prison for three months and mm -hmm. uh, ultimately was held without charge for almost a year and a half. We've been concerned that the state security, um, you know, are, are upset by this verdict and that they may try to block his release or interfere with his release. So, you know, that's our, our main concern right now. Um, it's, it's possible that there's some administrative issue here, but, uh, you know, we're pushing very hard. We know that Canadian uh, diplomats are pushing hard. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately, we just want uh, to secure his freedom and reunite him with uh, Marwa and her family. Based on what you know about UAE legal process, Paul, what, what, um, what of this? Is, is this a common practice of, of a, you know, an administrative detention of of a uh, you know an, an appeal what is it that uh, we need to understand about this well we do know from the the lawyer and uh, the local lawyer that we were working with in Abu Dhabi that people are released uh, immediately after um, 
uh, acquittals. That does happen. And in fact, we had put in place plans with uh, Canadian uh, diplomats that they were uh, literally going to take Salim right from the courthouse doors, mm. uh, you know, to, to a place where he could change and, and uh, freshen up. And then they were going to accompany him right to the airport. So we, we were expecting that he would be released on acquittal. But um, again, this is a, a legal system that is characterized by arbitrariness. Uh, there are different sort of uh, uh, power bases within that government. There's the prison authorities, there's the state security authorities, that the courthouse or the courts. And, and as Mara was saying, you know, a, a judge's ruling in, in this kind of a system is really just ink on paper until and unless the state security uh, services decide they want to accept it or acknowledge it. So um, I, there, maybe there's uh, you know, some sour grapes on the part of state security and they're, they're you know, just dragging their feet. Uh, you know, for these, for you know, for a few more days, that they can keep him imprisonment and and inflict, you know, really more 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 suffering on him and his family, um, and and that's that's what we're most concerned about, or, or maybe even longer. So, you know, we're we're really trying to keep up the pressure right now to to secure his freedom. My guests this half hour are Paul Champ. He's a human rights lawyer who's been fighting for the release of Salim Alarabi, and I'm talking, of course, to uh, Salim's eldest daughter, Marwa. Who's uh, who's joined me before on this program, Marwa? I I, I, um, I can't imagine really what's going through y- your family right now and the way of anxiety about all of this. But w- what do you feel is right to now plan for with him? Uh, well, uh, like uh, Paul Champ said, where our priority is to get my father out of prison and get him into a hospital as soon as possible. Um, so we're working on that and we're hoping that they would uh, release him as soon as possible because his health is our priority. And um, I, I think my father ha- stayed in prison for a very long time and did not go for a medical checkup for a very long time mm-hmm. as he used to uh, go in previ- previously. What, what, so, ha- what, um, had, what has ailed him? Uh, what, what has he been experiencing in the way of health issues there? My father, um, as I mentioned before, he has a, a chronic back pain d- disc. He also has asthma, uh, cholesterol. Uh, we recently knew that my father has kidney stones from uh, kidney stones from the unclean water that he has been provided in in prison. Um, he's he's suffering a lot, and we're really concerned, and we need him to go to ho- to the hospital as soon as possible. It is, of course. Uh, um the end of the day there uh, now in the UAE. Have you had any contact with him, whatever, since his uh, since his acquittal and his redetention? Um, uh, yes, today uh, we received uh, a call from him. He seemed very happy to, happy to uh, get an innocent verdict. Yet he's um, like um, saying that he's not feeling well at all because of his health, and he needs to go to the hospital. And he, he's not feeling well, and he's sick. And we're really concerned about it. Is he um, sounding optimistic, though, in terms of what his own release might he, be? He's happy, but he feels like he wants to go out of prison. He he has stayed there for a very long time, and it's it's time for him to go out. He's just over staying there. So um, he's happy for getting an innocent verdict, but he's waiting for the day that he's out of prison. Sure. And what did what did you tell him? Um, uh, actually, my mom talked to him today and um, she was telling him er, we're working on that and we're going to make sure that you'll you'll be free as soon as possible. And we're going to uh, take you to the hospital and make sure that you're going to get the good medical treatment as soon as possible. Paul Champ, this is um, unknown territory to some degree, right? Um, what are Canadian officials telling you that they now will be doing for you? Well, the Canadian officials have been in touch with their counterparts at uh, the UAE Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But uh, as I was saying, Kirk, you know, in some countries, um, government departments don't necessarily work together. Uh, and mm. at some, in some cases, they, they work uh, in opposition to each other. And um, so, you know, we're concerned that foreign affairs in, in UAE does not have uh, much power uh, over, over the prisons and especially over state 
security. So, uh, you know, we're hoping that uh, the Canadian government will will elevate this matter to uh, the political or the executive levels. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if Salim, uh, you know, who looks now, he may well be spending another night in jail, uh, and that's you know that's completely unacceptable. And and if he's not out uh, by tomorrow morning, we're we're going to be uh, demanding that the Canadian government, uh, Minister Dion, or perhaps even Prime Minister Trudeau, reach out uh, to their counterparts politically in the UA and insist on his release. How um, how high up the line so far have you had assistance um, in with this new Liberal government? Well, I can let you know, uh, Kirk, that I uh, met with Minister Dion personally on this case uh, a few months ago, and I've had uh, a number of communications with his office. Uh, Minister Dion has made uh, at least uh, three, if not four, uh, personal interventions on behalf of uh, Mr. El Arati. Um, as recently as last week uh, in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, he raised the case uh, with his counterparts uh, from the UAE. So, um, you know, we. we we have appreciated, uh, you know, the, the work Mr. Dion has done this thus far, but uh, you know, we're not we're not across the goal line yet. Um, I, and I know actually also uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has received regular briefings on this case, and he actually raised the case himself personally when he was in Washington last month with uh, UA officials who were who were at an event. So, you know, we know it's on uh, very much on the radar of uh, political Ottawa. Um, you know, it, it significantly in part, Kirk, because uh, of the uh, extreme uh, or serious human rights violations that were experienced by Mr. Alarati, particularly in this first few months yeah. of detention. So, you know, we're expecting them to keep up the pressure and, and hopefully Minister Dion and, and Prime Minister Trudeau will, will reach out one more time to, uh, you know, finally win Mr. Alarati's freedom. Given, uh, Paul, that this has been a case that has been marked by this arbitrariness, this unpredictability, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you have any concerns that your client now might face another wave of trumped up charge? Well, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that is very much a concern. Um, you know, this case, because there's been no sort of like underlying facts uh, that they've been holding him, it's, it's, uh, it's been a political case right from the beginning with, with Salim used as a, you know, a political pawn and a, a, you know, sort of a sideline fight between the UAE and Libya. So we don't know what the play is now at the political levels. You know, when you're a lawyer, Kirk, uh, and I know you've got you know, an interest in the legal background as well. You know, you, you look at the facts and you look at the law and then, you know, you try to advise your clients and come up with a strategy accordingly. Uh, this case is not like that because, you know, we can't we can't point to the facts on why they're holding him. Uh, there really isn't a legal case against him. And uh, really, it's, it's at the political level. Uh, that's why he's being held. And ultimately, I think it's at the political level that is going to result in his freedom. Marwa, um I don't want to pry into your family dynamic uh, too much, but I want to get um, our listeners a bit of a sense of how this ordeal has affected the, your household and, and what kind of things you've put on hold in your lives in order to fight for this. And, and whether, you know, in a lot of ways you are um, a lot closer now as a family in trying to, to, to gain his relief. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Like it has been, as I said, very difficult. I I, I stopped for like I didn't go to school this year. I took a break because I just wanted to do whatever it takes to get my father home. Uh, of course, like my younger siblings are um, like wondering why is my father not here and he's um, away for that long of like period of time um it has been like definitely difficult for my brother and sister as well like my younger siblings where i'm trying me and my mom are trying to act as if everything's okay and my father is um he's just in a business trip or something like that just to get him back home and we're trying to act as if everything's okay in front of my younger sibling and it was a bit, it was a very difficult actually to go over all of this time without my father. So you haven't, you haven't been able to really disclose to them what kind of craziness is taking place on the other side of the world? Because they would never understand. Hmm. It's very, it, it is a bigger thing than they're not, they're small to understand such thing. Because hmm. we, we're old, uh, 
like I'm not that old, but like even me, I I, I would never imagine myself being in, in such situation because we've lived in UAE for a very long time, and we we ne- my father never did something wrong over there, so we never imagined my father would be tortured and detained and all of that stuff like it, it was a shock for us as well so how would a younger um my younger siblings would un- understand it it would be difficult for them they wouldn't understand it yeah uh, I, I wonder how has it changed you marwa in terms of your own attitudes about the uae uh, it really showed that not everything from the inside uh, outside shows like how the country is from the inside you you never know how they're like it might seem that it's luxurious and everything's okay from the outside and everything but yet from the inside they are they don't have like they violate human rights they don't have a great ruling um but at the same time this showed me that you have to fight for your loved ones no matter what because they deserve to come back home as a, like I did for my father. And um, I'm happy with, with what I've done. And um, I'm happy that my father got an innocent verdict now, but we need him out of prison as well. Definitely. Um, Paul Champ, what, what have you learned out of this episode? Well, you know, it, it was you know, hard just listening to Mara right there you know, in, in how to explain it uh, or, or not explain it to her younger siblings because they just don't understand. I can tell you as adults, it, it's it's all, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to understand when someone yeah. um, is, is caught in this. You know, the, the United Arab Emirates uh, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi like to project a very modern image to the world, you know, with the, the tallest skyscrapers and the shopping malls and the fashion models and all that. But um, there there is a very... Um, you know, ugly underbelly there, um, and in fact, you know, the the human respect for human rights in the country is and um, uh, you know other countries in that region, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia and and uh, other other countries around it, and um, that's uh, th- that's something that I think that uh, the UAE has successfully been able to whitewash a bit. But there are numerous um, human rights reports by UN bodies, organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch about. Uh, like lawyers being arrested. Um, it was difficult for us to even find a defense counsel in this case because so many lawyers get arrested when they represent clients that, for right, yeah. whatever reason, the government thinks shouldn't be represented. Uh, you know, that's that's the kind of country that, that, that we have here. And, uh, you know, right now UA is is one of our closest allies uh, in, in that region. And, um, you know, I think that uh, Salim's case has really, I think, woken up Canadian officials to, you know, the kind of regime that they're dealing with there. It's a test. There's no question there's a test of um, of our relationship with that country entirely if it can't uh, resolve this in a way that uh, Canadians would consider to be the uh, the right way to do it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we at a bare minimum, Canada should expect that its citizens aren't going to be tortured. It should expect that its Canadians aren't going to be held without charges for a year and a half. It should expect that its citizens, uh, if they're acquitted in a court of law, are going to be released. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's cases like this that do uh, test uh, the relationship. And, you know, I can't, while Canada and the UA does have uh, strong relations, um, you wonder what those relations are worth when they, you know, can't uh, can't have an impact on a case with such uh, you know clear ma- uh, human rights violations. Well, look, I want to thank both of you for your candor and your time today. It's a it's an, a spectacularly busy time for both of you uh, with a lot. Thank of you for having us. And uh, Marwa, I'm sure uh, every father would be just proud um, of the fight that his daughter has uh, has waged on his behalf. Uh, so congratulations to you and Paul. Thank uh, you so much. And Paul, of course, uh, you know, keep at it. And uh, we'll hope for some positive re- resolution of this uh, in the hours and days ahead. Uh, thank you so much for your interest in this case, Kirk. All right. Take care now, both of you. Yeah.